Hey guys, before I start this video, I want to give out a quick disclaimer. I'm sick, and if I sound like I'm sick throughout the video, I'm sorry. I'm really congested. Anyway, let's move on. Hey guys, welcome to Bug Lover 27. Today, we're going to have every single finger crossed that Kappa does not demonetize this video. Because, dilly darn, I don't have that kind of money. Anyway, that isn't necessarily what I wanted to talk about. No, I'm going to attempt to make one of the hardest subjects in school make sense. Chemistry. Specifically, ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds. If you can't tell, we're talking a lot about the periodic table. Let's get going! To start off, I'm going to be doing a very quick review about where you can find things on the periodic table and what they mean. You'll need to keep this in the back of your mind. First off, metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Metals can be found here, all throughout here. Nonmetals will be found here. And last but not least, metalloids. They're like that weird in between of the two. As such, there'll be this Minecraft staircase right here. Now that you know that, see those numbers at the top of the table? Those are going to be defining the valence electrons, which is, to put it simply, the number of electrons in the outermost ring. Each ring can have a certain amount. The first one is 2, the second one has 8, so, so on and so forth. So, looking at the number of protons matching with the number of electrons, you get the number of valence electrons. Or just look here. Get it? Good! Let's move on to the real lesson. Hmm. Ooh. Imagine a race. This race is whoever gets 8 or no valence electrons first wins and is able to relax and enjoy. Almost everyone gets super aggressive in this race. More aggressive than Bakugo trying to beat Deku. As such, the elements will steal from one another or give away electrons. For instance, let's say lithium wants to get rid of one electron. It works super hard to force that one electron on any element that'll take it. Maybe give it to fluorine. It wants to gain one more electron, so why not? It's a happy win-win situation, right? Yes, but it'll also force it on any other element in any other column. Does that make sense? Okay, this is where ionic bonding comes in. So, we take these elements that have a unusual charge to them. They'll become attractive to one another. The ones with the negative charge will attract the positive and vice versa. When the different elements come together, you take the charges. Now, this is going to get very tricky, so pay attention. You want the charge to cancel. Taking the charges, you will see how many of the elements are needed to make it what scientists call, aka the cool kids, the neutral zero. Let's say you had aluminum and selenium. Well, aluminum has a positive 3 charge, while selenium only has a negative 2 charge. Finding the common factor of the two numbers would be 6, so then 2 groups of 3 and 3 groups of 2. In total, you need 2 aluminum and 3 selenium to make the process cancel. The equation would then turn into Al2Sc3. That is what will happen for all the elements. Hope that made sense because we're moving the train right along. Next up, covalent bonds. In a sense, this is kind of similar to ionic bonds when it comes to talking about electrons. The only thing is that instead of forcing it on other elements or stealing, it will have a uh, tug of war with one another. It'll have different bonds depending on how many electrons it shares. One bond is sharing one pair of electrons, two bonds is sharing two pairs of electrons, and three bonds is sharing three pairs. And so on and so forth. For example, if you were to have O2F2, then the name would be dioxygen and difluoride. See what I mean? Depending on how powerful the element is, it will turn into an ionic bond, also known as give and take, equal, unequal, or very unequal. <laughs> I kid you not. That is the name of it from my notes, I swear. Okay, bonds. In English, this means where the electrons will be between the two elements. Is it right smack 
dab in the middle, a little skewed, very skewed, or outright taken. How do we know how powerful the bond may be, you ask? Well, it's kind of easy to tell. But first, speed round background information. Ready? Go. Electron shielding is when you have a lot of electrons in your outer shell, so that electrons don't want to be around them, hence the name shielding. Effective nuclear charge. Similar, but the difference is that with protons, which is positive in the nucleus, so other electrons get attracted to them. Get it? Good. Let's get back on the main road. On the periodic table, you use your knowledge of valence electrons along with your new knowledge of electron shielding and elective nuclear charge to know how reactive any given element may be. I already did the hard work for you and figured out that the pattern, because the periodic table has a pattern for everything, is from lowest being to the left to the right being the highest, from the bottom being the least to the top being the most. The numbers I am referring to is called electronegativity. So while all this information is good and well for the brain, what do we do with it? At that rate, it's very easy math. Subtraction. You just subtract the two numbers from the elements. Cool. Huh. Now, with that weird list that I gave you back at the beginning of the topic, give and take, equal, unequal, or very unequal bonds, that is going to be the uh, name for how powerful the game of tug of war is. Let's say your difference is of two numbers from somewhere between, hmm, oh, 0 0.0 to 0 0.5. Then it's a covalent bond or just equal. The electron is able to be shared equally with each other. It's right smack dab in the middle. Okay, next, 0 0.5 to 1.6 is polar covalent bond or just unequal. 1.6 to 2.0, very covalent bond. Oh my, why do scientists do this? It is simply ionic bond, or as we mentioned before, give and take. Taking all of that, you now know two things at once, electronegativity and covalent bond. Now lastly, we have metallic bonds. This by far is the easiest to understand, so hopefully this can end on a nice calming note. Metallic bonds are basically just describing the bonds between atoms together. This really is just building off of ionic bonds. Remember how the bonds will stick to each other? Get this. All those extra electrons act as a glue for all the elements. This is called the sea of electrons. The valence electrons are the ones that get to move freely between the open space. If you were wondering what the name was for the structure, that's actually called a lattice structure. <laughs> Sorry, lattice structure. I'm a little hungry. It basically means that it'll repeat the same shape over and over again. You know how metals are ductile, able to be formed into wire, malleable, able to be smashed, and conduct electricity in high boiling and melting points? Well, that's all explained via metallic bonds. Check this out. When protons are separated, you know, to form the wire, the sea of electrons that they will just fill that empty space. Ooh! And when you separate the protons to, you know, smash it, the sea of electrons will just fill in that empty space again. Oh, and also, electricity. You know how it moves? The electrons are able to move freely, right? And they're moving at awesome speeds. So electricity can just go right between it and move itself easily and efficiently. Then lastly, it takes a stupid amount of energy to break the bonds. In turn, melting or boiling the metal. So the melting and boiling point is super high. Hmm. How can I leave you guys off on science in a really nice way? Astronomy, of course! Little fun fact, NASA's space shuttle can withstand 2,300 degrees on re-entry. On the bottom, it has a cool foam-like structure, and yeah, it's able to withstand all that heat. It's pretty intense, and the boosters are actually hitting their melting point during the launch. Just barely not doing so, thanks to the frost that's 
keeping the liquid oxygen uh, for, you know, the rocket fuel hitting the boosters. That's the only thing keeping it from melting during launch. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> well, everyone, that is all the knowledge I have on these three topics. Well, I guess you could say four if you count the electronegativity. If you guys are liking this kind of thing, then give this video a smack on the like bucket button. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Or if you have any other suggestions for future videos, let me know. And as always, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content. Hopefully they're coming soon. <laughs> Until next time, this is Buglover27. Have a great day.